Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our study. And we are now sending the signal out to Facebook land. And we're going to see where the signal lands. I've got the signal, turning it on. And there I am. It is live. And here we are. Me too. So praise the Lord for that. And there is Miss Gail. God bless you. You are number one in the comments tonight. Way Yay. to go, Idaho. And uh, so we're excited that. So we got Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. And hello, Karen. I mean, all Ooh. of you were like right there, neck and neck. I, I didn't even say. know how. How did Facebook even figure that out to put one in front of the other? My goodness, it was a photo finish. It's probably... <laughs> Probably somebody's uh, internet right. was faster. Than Hello, me. Louise. Good to see you here Why tonight. Why not doing that? God bless you. I don't know. Looks like you're just going to have to go with it. Hmm. Just say Gail. Hey. Got this. All right, cool. Well, let's see who else is on here. Riga. Hello, Riga. God bless you. And the Wright family is here tonight. Good to have the Wright family. I get it. it was a joke. But uh, Jim, Bobby, one of y'all. Or hi, y'all. It's good to see you on here tonight. Hello, Mom, a.k.a. Karen. Good to see you on here as well. So we are getting some people on tonight. It's going to enjoy our Bible study Thankful for that. Looks like, uh, who do I see? Woody and Sue on here tonight? Mm -hmm. Woody, Sue, hello to you. <laughs> see that? That was a rhyme. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty Very good. Very Dr. Uh, Seuss-ish. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, good. All right. So, well, you're getting them all in here. I just don't see them popping up, but we must see them down here. Oh, I see them on here. Okay. All right. Well, I don't see them on here. That's all right. Just never know what you're going to see here on Facebook. So, is what it is. I see all the hellos, but I don't see all the oh, interesting. Your so, brother-in-law is on. Yeah, cool. He's probably checking in. Hello. How you doing? Good to see you, Stephen. God bless you. So, it's not like letting me tag people in it. Yeah, it's always weird. So you're it's not getting weird. tagged in it. You're not getting tagged. Sorry about that. It's just not. But you're still it. But you're it. Nah. All right. Sorry. It's Corny Joke Wednesday. Corny joke Wednesday. At least that, that's what it's been for the last you know, five, ten minutes. So I'm I'm deeming it as corny joke Wednesday. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, sometimes a signal comes in and looks all good on here so we can follow it. Sometimes it gets all crazy over there. So we just don't know why it's not tagging, but it is what it is. So anyways, you know who you are and you are here tonight. So we're just giving a few minutes for uh, those to come on. Well, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping everybody's finding this okay yeah because it's kind of weird it's kind of weird my signals if you're still here could you click like the like button or the heart button or the so tell one then. oh i'll tell a joke Are go you for ready? it here it comes here's a good one do you know that the guy who invented the umbrella was just going to call it brella but then he hesitated you got it he goes um Brella. <laughs> yeah. I know the laughing emojis are on their way. All right. Yep. So they are. So there's mm -hmm. the hearts. I'll put in a couple. Okay. So people are here. Hello, <laughs> Lois. Welcome to our study tonight. Good to see you on here. Good. And there already, we so we are seeing your hellos. Good. All right, okay. good. So people are putting on here. Thankful, <laughs> thankful for that, that you are watching. And as you know, we just... Um, yep, so she's got, um, Louise got it. So good for you. Oh, there goes the laughs. Oh, look at everybody's freaking out laughing. That's awesome. Mr. Bob, good to see you on here tonight as well. Cameron, good to see you on here. Hello, somebody. So we are excited. There's all the fun, fun, fun. All right. So, well, we got it. We got, uh, some, some people on here tonight. So we're going to study the word of God with you and we might as well get going. And if others want to join and hang out, then so be it. God bless you. And uh, so remember, if you are on with us, 
Make sure you give us a hello, somebody, or something, uh, just to let us know you're here. And I also, seven. I think they have and connection with each other. Saying hello is good, as long as it doesn't disrupt our time of study, as you know, because we're focusing on the Word of God here tonight. So let's go ahead and just start us out as we do. So hello, friends and family. Welcome to Hanging with Pastors A and J. I'm Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jen. And we are blessed that you are here, praying that you are healthy, praying that you are safe, praying that you are just doing wonderful in the Lord and thankful for you to join with us. So let's go ahead and pray, jump into our study tonight. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for just your incredible love for us. May you work in us and through us through your Holy Spirit. May you bless each one that engages with us here tonight or maybe at another time. But God, may you just bless whenever anyone is engaging in this word of God. We are thankful, Father, that you are drawing people to our study tonight and that people will be blessed because it's the word of God and the word of God does not return void. So God, bless us in our study tonight, we pray in Jesus name and everybody together said, Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's get in here. And looks like we got hellos to everybody. Okay, good. So we're going to continue our journey in the Word of God. Turn your Bibles over to chapter 16 of Proverbs. So we're going to continue in our study of Proverbs chapter 16, gaining wonderful wisdom and insight from Solomon, who was gifted, as we know, by God. Uh, the gift of wisdom that was granted to him by the Lord. So he is uh, using that wisdom to give us insight and teach us the truth of the word of God as inspired by God himself. And so we get into it here before. And before we get into it, there was a question that was asked uh, several weeks ago that I did some checking into. And the question was, Pastor Jennifer had asked, if you were with us in study, asked, did Solomon write this during his reign as king or not? And looking into the scriptures of 1 Kings chapter 4, yes, indeed, Solomon was writing this or did write these words during his reign as the king. In fact, I believe it's 1 Kings 4.23 that says that people from all over were coming to gain from the wisdom of King Solomon. So we do understand that, yes, indeed, uh, these words. And yes, we know that Solomon was not the writer of every single proverb that we right. read. However, many seem to indicate that he was the author of everything and yet would take other proverbs from those that he gleaned from other people and include them in these inspired words as oh. well. So he highly was involved in just about the whole entirety of uh, the writing of the Proverbs, whether it be from his own divine appointment to write down the scriptures or from other uh, people that were gifted, anointed to give some Proverbs as yeah, well. Because so. I think Proverbs 31 is King Lemuel. I, I don't one Might be those. saying yeah. it wrong, so, but yeah. Anyways, um, so, but that's the idea. Hello, Andra. Welcome to our study tonight. Hello, Stephen. Welcome to our study tonight as well. All right, so we're in Proverbs chapter 16. Make sure that you hang out with us as long as you can because we want to talk about the Word of God because that's why we're here tonight. Amen. So let's get into uh, Proverbs 16, and we are going to start in verse 21 and jump into it tonight. The wise are known for their understanding and pleasant words are persuasive. Very uh, well spoken here. And I love the way this translates because you can look at it and your mind begins to, to wonder and you begin to look at people who may have, uh, you know, given words that were persuasive and pleasant and the wise for their understanding. And, and this goes into a whole, can go expand. And so I talk a little bit about it tonight and we'll see what, if Pastor Jennifer gets something out of it uh, that she might want to share as well. So, <clears throat> but again, here the wise, and I must always remind us, are those who are simply believers of God, trust in the Lord and constantly seeking to gain more knowledge of him in order to use and glean from the wisdom of God to allow them how to navigate their life. So this is who we call the wise, those who are just simply seeking more 
of God in their life. And we've given expanded definitions of this throughout our whole study, so you don't need more of that. But that's really the understanding here when we refer to the word the wise, okay? So, in fact, remember last week we discussed how it is those type of people those who are seeking the Lord, in fact, it was verse 20, that those who are seeking the Lord, to seeking more wisdom from God, it's those type of people, we, us here tonight, that will ultimately be the ones who the Bible says will prosper and be filled with real lasting joy. We talked about that at the end of our study last week. You can look at verse 20 in your time going back, and you'll see that's what Scripture indeed tells us. So, and I believe that this verse can be so true here. As a person of faith, those who are seeking more, to be more godly in their life, and we can see this attitude as it affects us personally, because it will be reflected in how we treat one another. Bible says that we are to do unto others as we would want to treat others as we want to be treated. And yet we don't learn this, this, this golden rule, if you will, until we begin to understand how it is that God is working and transforming, transforming our lives and renewing our minds to think a little bit differently, to think about other people rather than just ourselves. And here it says the wise are known for their understanding and pleasant words are persuasive. So this verse is so true when I see a person of faith treating others with respect treating others with kindness. Look at what Paul would say in Ephesians 4.15. It says, instead, we speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. So when you see this, it puts a really strong perspective on what Solomon is here. It says, the wise are the ones who are known for their understanding, and it's their words that will be more impactful to those who receive them. It's so true that people and, I, and you probably understand this too, and you've dealt with this in your life, how people will respond more positively and actually listen to those who speak with this type of love, care, and consideration. Pleasant words are persuasive, means that people will actually pay attention mm -hmm. to what you're saying when you do what, again, Ephesians 4.15 told us, instead speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. If we ever want to reach a generation of people for God, if we ever want people to respect or listen, man, how many know we've got to speak the truth in love? Never in condemnation, never in judgment, never in, oh, well, this is what's going to, no. Christ came to, to teach us how to speak that truth in love. And the apostle Paul just said, hey, as we grow, to be more and more like Christ, this is what's going to happen. We're going to treat and speak the truth in love. And it's so real mm -hmm. that when people see that you care, because remember I said before, yeah. people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Mm -hmm. So you can be the most, the smartest person with the greatest advice but if you come off pompous and people see that you don't really care about them, they're going to turn a deaf ear to you. They're just not going to receive it. But yet we may not be the ones who know everything. But if they see that we actually care, people will pay attention. They'll listen to our words and our words will hold more weight in their lives. There's no doubt about it. If we have a message of hope, which how many know we do? We have an eternal message of hope. And if we have a desire for people to care what we are saying, it must come from a person, from a heart, from us, who use godly judgment and good common sense. Meaning that as the scripture tells us, 
in 621, the wise, those who are godly, are known for their understanding. Understanding here can be known as having good judgment, mm -hmm. simple common sense. The wise are known for these things is what the scriptures mm -hmm. are actually telling us. This comes from a heart, the pleasant words that are persuasive. It comes from a person who seeks to lift others up and actually help them, actually want to help somebody, not just talk to them, right? but actually want to help them with persuasive words that will lead them to a greater knowledge of God. And listen, a definite good response from others will come as we choose not, now here we go, not to use foul language yeah. or degrade others with gossip. Mm -hmm. If we use vulgar language, those are not pleasant words. If no. we are caught speaking bad about other people, those are not pleasant words. They are not what God would have us to do. But if we do not allow ourselves to act in the way that the world is acting, people will receive what we have to say. Look at Ephesians 4.29 here as it tells us, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And this is just a few verses later than what we read, speak the truth in love. Paul here is breaking it down of saying, hey, this is the type of people that we need to be if we want our words to make an impact, a good impact, to be persuasive. Because I've said this often before, if we come in one breath and say, praise the Lord, and the next breath is flooping, fleeping, flapping this and all of this, this sailor talk, if you will, then people are just going to look at you and say, that's hogwash, man. You don't believe what you're saying. They're just not going to receive it well. So we have to be people who don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything we say be good and helpful. And yes, I know that's hard to do sometimes, but it is what we have to per, uh, you know, try to do. We have to try to do that so that our words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Good communication, good positive communication creates an atmosphere for others to understand and even learn from what you are speaking. We don't just say words to, to, to hear ourselves talk. No. I'm not talking to you tonight to hear myself talk, to look on this screen and to hear it reverberate back to me and say, okay, Anthony. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm trying the communication to create an atmosphere here so that we could understand and learn about the topic that I'm trying to talk about, which is the Word of God here tonight. Mm -hmm. So we've created an atmosphere, a relationship, so that you can do that. And good communication helps me to create that atmosphere, whereas I don't allow myself to jump into all of this stuff. And trust me, I've been there before. And those who are godly, or in other words, wise, will most likely find that their words are being well received by others. When you choose to walk in godly wisdom and choose to be wise and treat others and talk to others the way God would have us to do, People will want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. People will want to hear from you. And they'll give you the time of day to speak into their life. And I believe that's what we're talking about. Because yeah, it's not just the, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it too. Because like, I, I don't know when, at the beginning, when you started talking about it, I was thinking about like when you 
are telling somebody something that they need to fix. I can't in the way right there. That's what you're talking about there. Yeah, yeah. there. Like when you speak the truth in love, you're saying usually it's like you're telling somebody something that needs to be fixed or taken care of on their behalf, on, on their end, but it's all in how you say it. If you're like, don't act like that. And, and you did, you don't give them the, the positive spin on it. If you're just saying, don't do something, it sounds harsh and it sounds like, like you're picking at that. But instead, if you, if you approach it in a different way saying, Hey, maybe it would be, maybe it would work out better if, or, um, or, hey, next time, why don't you try something? Mm -hmm. I give, I think it comes down to part of it is it's easy to be, to recognize the problem, but why not be part of the solution and not just keep focusing on the problem too? Hmm. I, I don't know. That's what I was seeing in that, okay. in, in okay. part of it there. Okay. There's just a lot because it is so easy to jump on the bandwagon of the the negativity of the other part, like the in the proverbs. Yep, exactly. It, it, it's easy to jump there. It exactly. really is. Exactly. Definitely, pleasant words will be well received, and when it says they're persuasive, means that people will listen. Yeah. And as a teacher, she obviously has experienced both sides. If she comes in dictator to her students. They, they turn off their ears oh yeah because they get that all the time right mm -hmm. they're told what to do mm -hmm. but I know that when Pastor Jen has come home and said you know what I have made this breakthrough with this student and the whole reason for the breakthrough was they looked at him and said hey you actually care about me yeah and because they sense that she cares about them an eighth grader will learn math they will learn something that they really they don't want know, to. they don't want to at times <laughs> nobody really wanted to some did but most don't it's, it's it's school it's you know it's, it's it's different but but they said because i sensed you cared about me i will listen to you and that's exactly what the word of god is teaching us mm -hmm. because i sense that you cared your words are persuasive now and i will listen and then they learn and then it betters their life likewise us as christians talking to non-christians or maybe some who have fallen back or or Even to Christians, new new, new, believers. Or new believers. Yeah, it's all. It, it, it's but it way. applies to all areas of your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because even like as a parent, you don't, you can't just tell your kids you're doing it wrong and be like harsh on them. Like that's wrong. Don't do it that way. Unless you provide the, the what to do in the positive way, they're never going to learn that. So that that persuasiveness, that kind, you have to explain and show. You can't hold people accountable for what they don't know. Yeah, that's good. And I like the comments. The the iron sharpens iron. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, King all the all the kingdom builders. Ooh, these are great. not personal demolition. Yeah. Yeah, th there these are all great comments of ways of of taking the greater look, the the larger look at this, and applying mm -hmm. it to what we're saying here tonight. Because at the end of the day, remember. At the end of the day, what God is teaching us here is how to point ourselves and others to Christ. At the end of the mm -hmm. day, that's what it's all about, to win people. As as, as yeah. Brother Bill says, and hello, Bill and Ladina, as what Bill has said here is, is to build the kingdom of God. Yeah. That is the whole, is to show us the, the relationship between man, uh, our creator, God, and how we can have a relationship with him and how through our mistakes and our situations, we can still be brought back to God, even when we fall short of his glory. And God wants us to be with him forever. I mean, that's the whole essence of the gospel, the whole essence of Christ coming to this earth. So all of the teaching has to be reflected upon that decision. Is how do we relate to God and how do we relate to other people so that they too can relate to God, so that we can be a, a hub that allows not only our relationship with God, but a hub that also, you know, cultivates other people in their relationship. So remember, when you look at it in that aspect, that's how you have to see why it is that this is the whole thing, speaking the truth and love. Because, well, and also we're all broken people. We're all, we're all messed up. We all have, you know, things. So it's easy. We're already broken. We're already cracked or whatever. Right. So it's easy for people to destroy us. 
But how are you going to use somebody that you just destroyed to build a kingdom? Because it's people that build the kingdom. Mm. That's how the kingdom is built through people. Mm. So you can't you can't build the kingdom by destroying somebody else. You have to let God fix those things, and do it fix in love. those cracks. Yeah. And, do it and love, yeah. but it's God who has to do it. Yeah. We just have to. We we, we got to think about it like that. Well, we we have be the to, vessel. We have to. You know, you if something is in the, aren't working right, you care for it gently. You mm -hmm. take care of it. If something cracked, you're going to hold it softly and you're going to carefully, you know, get the super glue and, and help fix it. And you're going to do it softly. You're not going to be like, ah. Yeah, it's done. Right? It's done. That's right. Yeah. All right. Verse 22. So spend some time in that because it was very, it's very important message uh, for us to have uh to cultivate relationships and us to be the type of people that are drawing people closer to Christ and not repelling them by not being what we're supposed to be. Discretion is a life giving fountain to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. <clears throat> so, can you say I that mean, one more time? Because I like the way you said it. <laughs> Just the last part. Discretion is a life giving fountain to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. There you go. All right. <laughs> Knowing, so here we go discretion, understanding. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Knowing and understanding now what you're talking about is extremely valuable. Oh, yeah. All right. So, knowing and having an understanding of what you're talking about is extremely valuable. Why? Because it allows you to assess the situation and or the information given at hand. And then when you're given the information, assessing the situation because of your understanding of God's word, because of your understanding of God's will for your life, then you can make a better, more effective response plan to that what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. But the only way to achieve this understanding of life is to simply pursue God and to allow Him to constantly guide and direct our affairs. That way, our understanding, our discretion, the way that we deal with things is a life-giving fountain to those who possess it. When we possess the Word of God, when we possess what God desires for us to do, it's a life-giving fountain that continually guides, continually directs us to the greater ways, the greater direction the greater answers of how it is that we need to go through life mm -hmm. look at james 1 5 if you need wisdom ask our generous god and he will give it to you he will not rebuke you for answering asking for asking rather thank you so understanding that it is god who wants us to go to him as the life-giving fountain, giving us the understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom to navigate a successful life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we forget to ask God. And yeah. he says, come on. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary. Come, come. If you need wisdom, That's James would tell us, Ask, and he will give it to you. I think sometimes we don't ask because we're afraid for God to say no. <laughs> but that's not a reason to not ask. Because he says, ask, and he will give it to us. Now, the other side of this godly understanding. Let's go back to this now. This is Pastor Jen's favorite verse here. The second part. But the other side now, but discipline is wasted on fools. The other side of godly understanding is simply foolish ways. Mm -hmm. Meaning those who do not seek God and are simply stubborn in their ways 
that they won't even give ear to God. They won't even listen to God. Therefore, because they won't ask God, listen to God, are concerned about what God thinks, it's going to create more foolishness in their lives. And listen, if people won't listen to God, most likely they won't listen to you or us. Yeah. They won't listen to anyone. Right. Sadly. But discipline is wasted on fools. Those who give no attention to God because they won't listen anyways. It's kind of like trying to discipline or correct those who are under the influence or not wow. in the right mind. We've had people that come in and they are wasted out of their minds and they come into church. And the thing is, is I can preach the gospel all I want to, but they probably won't remember. Maybe, but probably not. It's kind of wasted at that point because they're not in the right mind to receive it. And that's where the Bible, what it's talking about. Discipline's wasted on those who simply have turned their ear off to God. Sadly, sadly. Yeah, and because they're just, you can, you can tell them, you can, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they're gonna, fine. Discipline, whatever. Yep. Go through it and then still do what they want to do. Doesn't doesn't phase them at all amen hello nicole hello taylor welcome to the study tonight bruce hello bruce all right so some heavy stuff yeah some heavy stuff but the reality if we put on our big boy pants big girl pants this is this is the truth and we've all been here before we've all been here before oh, yeah. when do you remember when somebody said hey you want to come to church you want to know about jesus and you're just like yeah whatever Remember that? Come on now. Be honest with yourself. That there was a time when it just made, it meant nothing to you. You were shut off from God. You didn't care about God. You were laughing at this whole thing. And they tried and they tried and they tried. But you were stuck in your foolish ways. And But thank God that he doesn't give up on us. Thank God that there are wise people out there, godly people that, are, that God uses to pursue us. Because that's exactly what happened in my life. But or maybe it wasn't that extreme. It could just be. No, I was extreme. You were extreme. I was extreme. But I'm saying some people, maybe it was just eh, not right now. I was definitely not for me. I right was now. definitely stubborn and foolish. There's no doubt about it. Maybe. Thought I had all the answers, but I didn't. Thank God. <laughs> but uh, you are teachable. But here I am today. And Miss Jean, where you are. welcome tonight. Hanging tonight with you. God bless you, Miss Jean. We're still praying for you and we love you. Very much. Yes. All right. 23. Let's get into some more of this. All right. From a wise mind, we understand the definition there, comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Wait a minute. Sounds you a bit familiar. That. A little. Hmm. hmm. Remember what I've told you before. When a word from the Lord is repeated, it's because he's making it very important and wants to impress upon us what he is saying. And I'm going to, I'm going to hit this again here just in a moment. But again, we see the effect now of a person who seeks more of godly wisdom in their lives. The effect is this, the words that we use will be more carefully selected and thought through. We won't talk off the cuff. For a wise mind comes wise speech. We must now be people who think about what we say. I spend a lot of times thinking about what I'm going to say and how it's going to affect those who receive what I say or what I text. I read it sometimes way too much, but I am right now very concerned, very concerned 
because I don't want to dishonor my God. I don't want to dishonor my testimony in Christ. I want to do everything that not only honors my God, but also draws people to Christ and that they can trust in me. Now, this is me speaking personally, but all Christians should have the same attitude that they can trust in me because my my, my godly mindset that seeking God, that my words come out better mm -hmm. to draw people. So I will spend much time carefully selecting and thinking through what I say. And I think a lot of people need to stop and think about what they say, mm -hmm. not just speak off the cuff. We got to be careful because what we say can hurt and the Bible says that we are to speak life and not death. So we've got to, so from a wise, godly mind comes wise speech. And it's not always verbal speech. Because like you said, text, email, all of that. You have to remember, it's not always what you type and what, you, what you're sending. Because there's no, there's no physical piece there to explain your body language and, and your facial expression and how you're saying it. So a lot of times how that is coming across is based on that person at that moment when they read whatever it is you sent. Whatever their emotional state is at that time comes through there. Mm. So, uh, you know, you may have sent it with with perfect, you know, nothing harm no no problem at all but if they're in a bad mood when they receive whatever it is it's going to come across a little bit with a negative something to it even though that may not have been at all you yeah so we have to be careful about yeah, perception is everything yeah so we have to be careful how we put it out there but in the same way we put out there we also need to make sure that when we read something we check our emotional state before we determine that that person was upset yeah. or that person was saying something bad yeah, that's good. That's good. Ever had a time where you just spewed out all kinds of junk and nastiness? Ever mm -hmm. had that time before? Of course you have. But listen, a person who seeks God, who is growing consistently in Christ, will find themselves changing how they speak. There's no doubt about it. If we are born again, new creations in Christ, the old has passed, behold, the, the new is here. That mm -hmm. has to affect every single part of our life. And therefore, God's already cleaned the slate from us. We need to work very hard to keep our wise speech. And that is not only in how we treat everybody and how we talk to them, but it's also what we talk about. Okay. Wise speech is what are we talking about, you know? What are the subjects that we talk about now? Are we talking about all this junk in the world? Or are we talking about Christ? Are we talking about God? Are we talking about things that matter really in there? So it can affect us all there. Because like verse 21 earlier that we read, which said the same thing, the words of the wise are persuasive. We see a positive effect of godly speech. And I already talked to you about this. If you were with us, if not, wait till it's done, rewind it. All right. But we can have a positive effect on other people's lives with our godly speech because our words, our godly words will be more persuasive as people can trust in what we say mm -hmm. if people can trust in what you're saying what you say will make a great impact on people's lives look at for on colossians 4 6 it says let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone let your conversation be gracious or gracious and attractive Think about that. Think about when you want to say words that are not only gracious, but they attract people. They draw people to want mm -hmm. to hear more of what you got to say. And man, as a preacher, as a speaker, certainly we want our words to be gracious and attractive to those who want to hear and receive more of the truth that we feel God has given us to say. But this should be the goal for every single Christian, that we let our conversation be gracious, humbling. 
All right, let's go. Not always easy. No, but it's something we strive for. And if you mess up. Ask for forgiveness. Ask forgiveness. Say, hey, and I then move up. forward. I do that on the wrong all foot, the time. Or the right foot, sorry. I do foot. that all the time. Because even though here I'm on my game as a hubby at home, sometimes I just stink and thinking, man. Say things, put my foot in my mouth. Have to go back and say that's not what I really meant to say. See, because it's why. not always what is said, it's how it's said. Yeah. And it's also how the person hearing it, their frame of mind, their emotional state, how they're going to and take sometimes, what is said. Sometimes I'm just a punk. And I mean, sometimes just, I'm just an emotional mess and I take so, it wrong. So it happens. But so, but you own up to your words and yes. you make amends and we do it better next time. Yes. That's what the word of God. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. So you have the right response for everyone. All right. Verse 24. Kind words are like honey. How many like honey out there? My yeah. wife loves honey. Sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. See, so healthy. Healthy. Yes. Healthy for the body. So coming from a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Now Solomon is saying kind words are like honey. So he's expanding now to a point of, hey, be nice. Yeah. Be kind. Be gracious. You know, speak those words that are uplifting because they're like honey. And honey, whether you're a honey lover or not, it's the point is that honey was something, especially in this time, that was very sweet and very, uh, that was the desserts that they would get in and, mm -hmm. and just really enjoy the honey from a honeycomb. And I mean, yeah. it's just, it really gives us that sense of, oh, that is delicious. And that is yet kind words are like that sweet to the soul, healthy for the body. There's no doubt that kind words can do so much for those around us yeah. just to be kind. And the response level for our pleasant words are just simply off the chart. People respond to kind words. Here we are taught that as we allow God now to transform our lives to renew our minds, as I told you earlier, right? As we allow God to work in us, right? That we too will then be able to spread his life-giving words. Mm -hmm. This is sweet to the soul, healthy for the body. This is not that we can speak anything into anyone, but when we speak godly wisdom, godly words, they are sweet to the soul. Hey, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in God in Christ shall not perish. Believes in the Son shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, I mean, that's sweet for the soul. Mm -hmm. That's to save you if you believe that. And then we begin to give these life-giving words of God in a way that will refresh people's soul. Give them hope. Bring them a future. Give them spiritual, eternal health mm -hmm. for their lives. And I want to tell you here, that sometimes, many times, a kind, uplifting word can actually bring physical health. Absolutely. Because a lot of times, our physical health, not all the time, but a lot of times, our physical health is because our mental status is not right. And our physical is responding to what we're feeling upstairs. Mm -hmm. As we know, uh, we can have those mental challenges and those mental illnesses and, 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 and or anxieties or depression and things that are very real. Mm -hmm. Our physical body, everything in us is going to respond to that. But if we can give words, kind words that uplift somebody, that draw them to the, the hope and the future we have in God, let me tell you something. People will respond and they will be filled with health. I've seen it before. It happens every single Sunday when people yep. come here to church. They walk in sick. We pray. We give a word of encouragement. And then all of a sudden they're like, whoa, I they feel perk up a bit. better. Why? Not because we have any authority, but because Christ has the authority. And he said kind words are sweet to the soul and healthy to the body. 
Mm. Oh. You know, they've actually done studies, and if you talk to a plant and you talk negatively to a plant, yeah, it will not grow. It'll it'll yeah. wither yeah. and die. And imagine that a plant that doesn't even talk back to you, but it's in how it's being it said. Responds to the negativity. It responds to the negativity. How much more people respond to those same things, and our physical body actually is is part of that. And it's not only what we speak, but what we hear, mm. because you yeah. hear what you speak. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. you got to think about that. It's not always that somebody's got to speak, you know, fluff and stuff to you. You got to be speaking it because you hear what you speak. Yeah, that, that, that's good. I just believe that people in this world are starving for kind kindness. words more than ever. Yep. For kindness. Yeah. People are starving for it. Kind words are like honey. I mean, let me challenge you. We're almost done here, but let, let me challenge you. Let me challenge you here. The next person that you engage with, give them kind words. See the difference. Whether it be maybe you're going out somewhere, waiter, waitress, whether it be at the store. Hey, kind words, sweet to the soul, healthy. And then just maybe when those kind words come out, someone will sense that you care. And they just might continue the conversation that opens the door to allow you to speak the future and hope of Christ. Mm -hmm. They just might. But if we're not kind, the door is shut. And people today need to hear kind words. Mm -hmm. Too many times are we trying to divide, trying to conquer, trying to make people see this when all Christ is calling us to do is to treat others the way we want to be treated, to love on others, to really just open the door of their heart for God to shine in and bring health to their soul and their body. I truly believe it. Yep. I absolutely. truly believe it. All right. A couple more verses and then we are done. There is a path before each person that seems right, but the it ends in death. But it ends in death. Listen to this again. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. So what do we got going on here? This is deep. Here we have a sad reality spoken of here. A terrible sad reality. The reality that many people live with every single day. The fact that they live their daily lives doing what they want and what they think is right without regards to God and his word. Mm -hmm. The path before each person seems right. What people are, most people are doing, oh, I think I'm doing right. I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm on the right path. You know, hey, it's all good. But people tend, tend to think this, that if they're just relatively a good person, according to their definition, according to their definition, not God's, that all will be good and that one day all people will go to heaven. Well, this word right here is a cautionary statement. Mm -hmm. The path before each person, each person thinks it seems right. They think it's right. But its end is really death. Solomon made a statement here. Again, he spoke this in verses four, uh, chapter 14, verse 12, the same exact words. Why? Again, signifying the absolute importance of this truth. There are many roads that people will travel in life, but only one, only one, let me say that again, only one will lead to eternal life with God in heaven. Only one. Jesus spoke this, and people have trouble with this. Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants all roads to lead to God, all roads to lead to heaven. And many people are preaching that and teaching that, that eventually all roads, doesn't matter what religion, what thing, it doesn't matter. Well, that's not what Jesus said. He is the creator. He is God. The rest is hullabaloo. The rest is baloney. Because the reality is what Jesus said in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Benito, period. There's no need for explanation. 
This absolute truth that Jesus spoke of here defines the only way a person can go and live with him, with the Father in heaven forever. And that any other way other than through Jesus will result in eternal separation from God in eternity in hell. Simple enough. That's just the way it goes. Today, people have been fooled by various religions, cults, and ways to be so-called spiritual. This will all enlighten you to get you to God. But make no mistake, Jesus is the only way to eternity with God in heaven. He said it. He meant it. That's it. The truth has been spoken. But what did Solomon remind us of? He says, everybody's going to think they're on the right path. Especially, I would add, if they think they're spiritual. In today's generation, we have many young people that are seeking spirituality without the accountability of God. They want to feel spiritual and, and, and enlightened without the accountability to God. The two don't go together. Because at the end of the day, people, the world might think it's on the right path. But Solomon and all the wisdom of God given him says, but its end, it ends in death. Mm. So... It says each person. It doesn't say the non-believers. It doesn't say that. It says each person. That is us. So at any given moment, there is a path before each of us that seems right. And I think sometimes that is based on our own. I can do this because... I'm right about that. And so I can do this. And it's that step onto that path that's really not the right way to do it that will end up in death. Mm. I think that we can all, you know, you can come off that path. Because I think there's always a right and a wrong to everything we, we come across, everything we do. So there is always that path before us that we could start down that wrong path by making that bad decision. And then that does lead to death. Now, I believe that you go, if you choose that path, there's always, even on that path, there's always that way back because God never gives up on us. So if we start down that wrong path, there's always a way back to the correct path. Mm. Mm. But it's all choice. And we have to be careful when we're making decisions that we're not making it in that um that i self-righteous you know what i mean like that i don't know i i'm trying to think of the word and i can't think of it right now but it's that like i'm i'm right in doing what i'm doing because hmm. not it, well, when it should be justifies just everybody they... justifies right but i'm saying it that if we you can always justify your own actions to make it seem right but unless it lines up with scripture yeah is it right so so what Pastor Jennifer has obviously done is it kind of pinpointed to sit to a definite situation that we can find each person can find themselves on. Whereas I believe contextually through this, it really talks about that each person has to make that decision mm -hmm. to follow Christ. That each person has to make that ultimate decision in their life. But if you okay. if you look at if you if you look at, you know, this is the worldly not making it and not turning to God, but you can you can take the that's the broader view, but then you can kind of pinpoint this, or I should say that's more of the pointed view. But then you can broaden this out to all experiences in life. Yeah. That even as Christians, we might think we're doing what's right, but it could be leaving leading to a big problem. Yeah. For the wages of sin, will yeah. always be death. So again, that's for a deeper section. We're running out of time. I'm but sorry. but but no 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 no. There's no. I'm just saying I don't want to 
You know, oh yeah, I just that. I I look at it more like in our daily choice. No, and that's and that's taking a broader view, and all of Scripture can have a broader view of how to look at it in different areas of our life. But there's always going to be what we might look at as an absolute, and I believe that Sally, the absolute here is that when people think they're doing it right without regards to God, it's going to end in death. Yeah, because you keep you just keep choosing that. Yeah. Going. But there's only one way. And that is through Jesus as the point yeah. for us. Yeah. Okay, last verse. This one's very quick and very simple. Um, next verse. Right, so there it one. is right there. All right. This. Okay. As you know, the Proverbs often shift radically in thought. They do. Yeah. Uh, that's why you can't give a summary of the Proverbs because they shift in so many different ways at times. And this is one of those cases. But practical truth can be seen here as well. And I find this to be very interesting because we we're talking about the only way to Jesus and eternal separation and heaven or hell. I mean, that was the previous conversation. Right. But now we're getting to this verse, which I was thinking about. Do I jump on it tonight? But I said, yeah, let's get it tonight. Let's go because we're going to finish off Proverbs next week, Lord willing. Um, it says, it is good for workers to have an appetite. An empty stomach drives them on. So, oh, makes sense. Makes sense. So, what's going on here? What, what's 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 Solomon talking about? What's what's the word of God teaching us here? Well, here we get the idea that God has given people a great motivator to work. Yeah, that's simply it. To fill their bellies when they're hungry. Bible tells us that if you don't work, you don't eat. Yep. That's been the ongoing situation. And 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 let's look at Second Thessalonians three ten. So I think God here is in Solomon's telling us hey, the motivation for you to get out there and do your part which we know comes from Genesis because this was the original curse of, uh, or the original judgment rather of man from yeah. the fall, the sin is that man will have to till and work to, to the ground. Yeah. And, and I probably blew that up in paraphrasing, but that's simply what it says that we are going to have to work the ground, uh, and, and work, you know, God to was to eat. God was freely to give it and all the trees and all they had to do was tend the garden. But because you did this, this is what you're going to have to do now. You got to go out there and labor for it. Yeah. You know, so that's from the original. But here we get the idea from Paul, the Apostle Paul. Even while we were with you, we gave you this commandment. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. So that's what he said right here. It's good for workers to have an appetite and an empty stomach drives them on. If you're hungry, boy, you're going to go try to get some food and you got to work for that. It goes on to say here, yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and meddling in other people's business. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> idle hands are what they say. Uh, idle hands are the devil's playground. work playground. Work, so, yeah, what workplace, you know what I'm saying? But it, it kind of seems to be that way. So, he says, refusing to work, meddling in other people's business. Uh, man, get to work, he's saying. And it says this, but here's what Paul says We command such people to, and urge them in the name of Lord Jesus to settle down and work to earn their own living. So what we get here from the proverb here, it's good that we have an appetite. It's good that we have needs because it's going to drive us to do what God has called us to do, to not be lazy, to get to work and to make a living. It's the duty of every follower of God to set a good example of working hard for the Lord and trusting him for the blessings of our labor. We must set the example because the word of God says, that's why he gives us empty stomachs. That's why we get the stomach pains, the the, the growl, all of that when your stomach, what does it make you do? I got to find some food. So very practical, kind of a switch, kind of interesting, but yeah. <laughs> God gives us the motivation of what we need to do what we do, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. Well, hope you got, the, got something out of that study because that's where we are tonight. So want to go with it. Uh, reaching together Sundays, 830, 1030 in person. Man, we are having such a great time here in the church. We seriously are enjoying what God is doing. It's an absolute incredible, wonderful experience that God has given us here as he is rebuilding our church, rebuilding uh, hope and rebuilding lives. And man, it is awesome. So you want to be part of it. Be part of one of our services, both of our services. Man, God's doing a great thing. We continue to be faithful. Trust the Lord. There's no doubt that he's blessing our church. And you would have to be blind to not see what God is doing here in our church. So open yep. up your eyes rather and just see the glory of God all over this place. See the anointing, see the healing of what he's doing. So we continue to be very thankful for you. But let's share what also is going on. 
ladies tomorrow yay i'm so excited so tomorrow night at 6 30 is our ladies evening fellowship so if you have not signed up please let us know that you are coming so that we make sure we got enough food we got a big plan and it's just exciting so come on out and be part of that so just be part of it and if you forget still come we'll cover you okay? oh yeah yeah sorry so yeah we'll, if you don't we'll, sign up it's, it's totally understandable we just like to hear but if we don't don't worry about it. Don't come. Not, I didn't sign up, so I'm not going to come. Don't do that. You come. God always supplies. We just like to to, to to make it known if we can. That's all. All right. And and you guys do a good job with that. All right. So lastly, we're thankful for each one of you. We're praying for you. And we're just praying that God will continue to bless you. Thank you for supporting our church in so many wonderful ways in your prayers and your physical support. It's just awesome. This is an awesome journey of faith together. And uh, we just we just want to tell you that we really, truly love you and praying for you. And we pray that you play, stay safe. Yes. Be mindful of what's going on. Be healthy and uh, continue to love on one another. And most importantly, keep trusting in Jesus. Amen. Pastor Jen's going to pray us out. And, and Debbie posted in there, yes, we do have child care. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if you want to trust your kids to pastor. And Cameron. They'll have, and Cameron. Yes, Cameron's doing too. We're here, man. They're we gonna got have you. Fun. We got you. All right. It's all right. Lord, thank you for tonight. And thank you for your word and how it just touches so many different parts of our lives. Lord, I pray as we go forward from here that we remember that we need to be kind. We need to make sure that what we're doing is for the right reason and the right purpose. And that is always seeking you and to build your kingdom. Lord, I pray that as each one is going about their days, that you would keep them safe and healthy until we can meet again in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for engaging with us. Thanks for being with us. God bless you all. It was a wonderful night in the study of God's word. So whether you're listening to it live right now or later, may God bless you and may God just uh, really, really inspire you to keep doing it for Jesus. So with that being said, have a blessed night. I'm Pastor Anthony. Pastor Jim. Saying we love you. We'll talk to you all very soon. See you Sunday at church. Actually, ladies, tomorrow night first. Yes. Please. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>